This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so you know what is diencephalon? Um, it's a part of brain between cerebrum and brainstem. The cavity is the third ventricle. So the hypothalamic sulcus divides the diencephalon into two parts, pars dorsalis and ventralis. Pars dorsalis consists of thalamus, metathalamus, and epithalamus. Ventralis consists of hypothalamus and subthalamus. Okay, now answer for this uh, question. Hypothalamus belongs to which part of the brain? Samira, will you answer for this? Uh, hypothalamus belongs to which part? Yeah, uh, it's diencephalon. Okay. Uh, you have to say developmentally, this uh, diencephalon. Okay. Um, Karthik, will you able to see the PowerPoint? Okay. So now Ramea answer for this. Uh, the diencephalon is divided into two parts by what? Crura cerebri, ma'am. Uh, it's not crura cerebri. Uh, any Aisha, will you answer? So which divides the diencephalon into two parts? Already over, no? Diencephalon for you? Because thalamus was over. Okay. Uh, Akshara, roll number 11. Will you answer for this? Ryan Kaplan is divided into two parts by? Okay. So Aarti only answered, it is hypothalamic sulcus, okay? So I'll show in the picture, okay? Uh, just see this picture. Uh, will you know the parts of this picture? If you respond, then it will be easy for me to um, uh, take the class, uh, okay? Um, so do you familiar with this? Uh, all of you are familiar with this diagram. Any doubt in this? Do you have any idea about this diagram? Have you? Know the parts of this diagram? Okay. Okay, okay. So the first one, uh, the arrow part is the carpus callosum. What are the parts of the carpus callosum? I think you know. Uh, this is the posterior part, cranium, body, then genu, and here is the rostrum. This is the pharynx. Okay. And, uh, and the second arrow part is the pineal gland. And third one is the superior and inferior colliculus okay and what is the fourth one what is the fourth one fourth ventricle yeah good it's fourth ventricle okay uh, good okay we'll go to the next uh, thing what is this one uh, fifth arrow part pons okay very good pons okay so now uh, the same picture uh, after removal of the carpus callosum what you are seeing here so you can see the lateral ventricle after removal of carpus callosum you can see the lateral ventricle which is a c shaped cavity you can see it is a c shaped cavity so in the insert i have uh, see this is the c shaped cavity of the lateral ventricle so which consists of anterior horn inferior horn posterior horn and the central part okay so this is the cavity of the lateral ventricle and uh, here you can see the cardiac nucleus and this is the lentiform nucleus here okay and this part is the amygdala nucleus and here is the hippocampus so the um, cardiac nucleus consists of head body tail okay uh, i think you are now clear with this picture i'll go on to the next so now um, actually this lateral ventricle is inside this septum pellucidum so septum pellucidum is uh, you know what it is uh, actually, which attaches the inferior part of carpus callosum to the pharynx, which covers the lateral ventricle. So this is the septum pellucidum, and this is the pharynx. And you can see the thalamus. Uh, this uh, enlarged part is called the thalamus. Okay. And uh, this one elevated part in the thalamus. This is the. What is this? Anybody is having any idea? What is this?
okay so i'll answer okay it is a interthalamic adhesion which connects the two thalamus and uh, this is the third ventricle this cavity actually between two thalamus and hypothalamus that is uh, third ventricle is a cavity of the diencephalon lateral ventricle is the cavity of the telencephalon okay that is between two cerebral hemisphere you have lateral ventricle between uh, the cavity of diencephalon is the third ventricle okay so this cavity here is the third ventricle you can see the interthalamic adhesion which connects the two thalamus okay i'll go to the next slide okay now see this so uh, you can see a sulcus which extends from interventricular foramen to the cerebral aqueduct so this is the midbrain section of the midbrain the cavity of the midbrain is the cerebral aqueduct now the sulcus which connects the interventricular foramen to the cerebral aqueduct this sulcus is called hypothalamic sulcus so which divides the diencephalon into two areas pars ventralis pars dorsalis so pars ventralis consists of hypothalamus and subthalamus pars dorsalis consists of the thalamus epithalamus and metathalamus okay so you can see the pineal gland here okay so clear now uh, actually this cavity here is the third ventricle now uh, you have to know about the structures uh, actually this is the floor of the third ventricle okay this uh, the, this area is the floor of the third ventricle so now you have to name the structures here so this is you know this is the corpus callosum this is the rostrum of the corpus callosum so this is the lamina terminalis okay this is optic chiasma okay then here is the infant diploma pituitary stalk and you can see the mammillary bodies and this is the posterior perforated substance and this is the tegment of the midbrain so all this structures forms the floor of the third ventricle okay starting from above here is the lamina terminalis okay this is the anterior commission and this is the optic chiasma infundibulum this is pituitary gland you can see the anterior and posterior pituitary and this is the infundibular staff okay and here is the mammillary body this elevation here is the uh median eminence and you have the tuber sinarium also here okay and this is the posterior perforator substance and tegment of the midbrain okay i'll go to the next picture now you can see the hypothalamus just below the thalamus okay uh, below the hypothalamic sulcus it is located okay now we will see the coronal uh, section of the brain some parts then we'll go on to the exact hypothalamus then then only you will understand the relations okay now in coronal section so this is corpus callosum again this is the corpus callosum this is the septum pellucidum okay you can see the cavity on either side this is the lateral ventricle okay and uh, this is the caudate nucleus you can uh, what you have seen in sagittal section i have placed in coronal section so this is the caudate nucleus and you can see the thal uh, thalamus here between thalamus and the caudate nucleus you can see the thalamus striate vein and you can see the interthalamic adhesion which connects the two thalamus the cavity of the diencephalon here is the third ventricle this is the third ventricle and you can see the pineal gland here and you can see the corpora quadrigemina which consists of superior and inferior colliculus so clear about this coronal section any doubt in this picture shall i continue because if you understand this only i will proceed with the relations of the hypothalamus uh, uh, you people are clear no shall i continue yes ma'am okay okay now see the next picture it's again a, a diagrammatic representation whatever uh, shown only you can see this is lateral ventricle again thalamus this is third ventricle now below the thalamus this part is the hypothalamus okay this is the hypo now you can uh, know the location of the hypothalamus so this is situated below the uh, thalamus okay this is again a coronal section so here the hypothalamus part is removed and you can see the, uh, underneath that you can see the sub sub subthalamus okay this is the subthalamus okay and uh, below that you can see the midbrain section and uh, red nucleus and substantia nigra so lateral to the thalamus you can see the internal capsule okay uh, so this is the posterior limb of internal capsule and this is the lentiform nucleus and okay and uh, okay other things i think you know you are familiar with this diagram any doubt in this diagram after removal of hypothalamus this is uh, actually the coronal section 
taken um, little behind the previous section. So that's why you are not seeing the hypothalamus here. Okay, so clear. Shall I continue? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Uh, Okay, now see the inferior view of the brain. I think you know what is the name of this fossa? What is the name of this fossa? Any idea? So will you answer for this person? What is the name of this fossa? Interpedangular fossa. Very good. Interpedangular fossa. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, you know the boundaries of the interpedangular fossa and the parts around it. Okay, what is this? This is optic no chiasma, optic tract. Okay, so which end in the lateral geniculate body. This is a section of the midbrain. You can see the cerebral pedangle with crest cerebri, substantia nigra, red, red nucleus, and this is cerebral aqueduct. Okay, now see the contents of the interpedangular fossa. This is the mammillary body and tuber area. And here is the infundibular stack. Okay, now on either side of this, you can see the hypothalamus. So now the hypothalamus is in the inferior part. You can see just a, actually this is the anterior perforator substance. The posterior perforator substance will be here. So it is almost close to the posterior perforator substance. So now what is tuber cinerium? It is the raised region bounded cardly by mammillary bodies and rastrally by the optic chiasma. So this is a raised region in the interpedangular fossa. The infundibulum will emerge from the middle of the tuber cinerium and is connected with the posterior lobe of the hypophysis, so with the respiratory gland. So actually, uh, this part, okay, um, this elevation here around the base of the infundibulum, this elevation is called median eminence. So there will be an elevation around the base of the infundibulum in the tuber cinerium. This is called median eminence. I think now you are clear about tuber cinerium, infundibulum, and median eminence. So I'm going to continue. Okay, now we'll go on to the hypothalamus. So you know it forms the ventral part of diencephalon. It also forms the floor and the lateral wall of anterior part of third ventricle below hypothalamic sulcus. So weighs about four gram only okay it is only about 0.3 percent of the total brain mass so it extends from uh, i think you know uh, this, uh, previous uh, um, picture so it extends from optic chiasma to the mammillary body so this is the extent see the hypothalamic sulcus will be here so below the hypothalamic sulcus will be the hypothalamus so it extends from optic chiasma to the mammillary body okay um so no, you know it controls may importantly main three system. One is autonomic nervous system, endocrine system, and limbic system. So it uh, basically plays a major role in maintaining the homeostasis, and it is called the head ganglion of the autonomic nervous system. Okay, now we will um, see where it is actually located. Uh, this is again a coronal section. You know this is the lentiform nucleus. This part is the internal capsule below that you have the parts of the limbic system that is the hippocampus parahippocampal gyri shia terminalis okay so now this hypothalamus is cl placed close to the limbic system thalamus and hypophysis that is the pituitary gland okay and uh, laterally it is also related to the internal capsule so now we'll go on to the boundaries of the hypothalamus okay so now in this picture this is the hypothalamus so superiorly it is bounded by thalamus separated by hypothalamic sulcus. So medially it is related to the third ventricle. Okay. Now you are clear with the superior and medial relation. Superiorly will be thalamus separated by hypothalamic sulcus. And medially it is related to the third ventricle. Okay. Now see the next picture. So the, this is the thalamus. Okay. So hypothalamus will be around here. Okay, so laterally it is related to the internal capsule and posteriorly it will be related to the subthalamus here and tegmentum of the midbrain. You know this part of the midbrain is the tegmentum. Okay, so posteriorly it is related to the subthalamus and tegmentum of midbrain. Okay, so you know the extension extends from optic asthma up to mammillary bodies. Okay, now come to the anterior relation. So anteriorly it is related to the lamina terminalis. This is the lamina terminalis which connects the anterior commissure to the optic chiasma. 
and inferiorly it is related to the structures forming the floor of the third ventricle okay so you know what are structures forming the floor of the third ventricle so keep this in mind because this relation again you are going to read in the lateral ventricle okay so the first structure this is the optic chiasma next will be the pituitary strap then your mammillary body posterior perforator substrate and tegmentum of midbrain so now you are clear with the boundaries of the hypothalamus any doubt in this um uh, shall i continue yes, yes ma'am ma okay uh okay now come to the subdivisions of the hypothalamus actually um this is a um again a sectional view you can see the thalamus here with the intrathalamic adhesion this is the hypothalamus so this hypothalamus is divided by the anterior column of fern fornix and mammillothalamic tract and fasciculus retroflexus okay into two zones this zone is called as the medial zone and this one is called as the lateral zone okay so hypothalamus is divided into two parts medial zone and lateral zone okay so this medial zone is again divided into periventricular zone that is close to the third ventricle it is called periventricular zone and thicker intermediate zone that is between periventricular zone and lateral zone so i think you are clear with the subdivisions so we'll go further uh, go into the further subdivisions okay so this subdivision is from medial to lateral now we are going to see the subdivisions from anterior to posterior so anterior to posterior the hypothalamus is divided into three four areas okay one is the preoptic region so you can see the dotted blue uh, arrow this is the preoptic region next black color arrow is the supraoptic region the third one is the tuberal region and fourth one is the mammillary region okay so this preoptic region will be uh, adjacent to the lamina terminalis okay the supraoptic region will be above the optic chiasma and tuberal region will be above the infundibular stack and median eminence and the mammillary region is above the mammillary body and the area around it okay uh, we'll see in the next picture okay so you can see the preoptic region adjoining the lamina terminalis this is above the uh, optic chiasma is a supraoptic region third one will be the um infundibular tuberal region okay a tuberal region above the infundibular stalk and uh, tuber sinarium and median eminence and the fourth one above the mammillary body this is the mammillary region so this is the column of the pharynx okay so now i think you are clear about the subdivisions there are two subdivision one from medial to lateral another from anterior to posterior okay now we'll go on to the nucleus of the hypothalamus so you know the four regions from anterior to posterior so we are going to read the lo uh, location of the nucleus according to the um anteroposterior divisions of the hypothalamus okay so it consists of numerous small nuclear masses they are called hypothalamic nucleus okay so this is the preoptic region close to the lamina terminalis which has the preoptic nucleus okay so the supraoptic region has four nucleus tuberal region has three nucleus mammillary region has two nucleus okay so the name of the nucleus in the preoptic region is same preoptic nucleus okay there is no confusion here if you see the supraoptic region so you have um four nucleus here okay this is not shown four here only three is shown in the next picture i'll show you okay the four name of the four nucleus are one is anterior next one will be supraoptic third one is suprachiasmatic then next one will be the paraventricular nucleus okay the tuberal region will have three nucleus arcuate nucleus ventromedial and dorsomedial nucleus okay then mammillary region has mammillary nucleus and posterior nucleus okay so now i think you are clear about the nucleus uh, any doubt in this just recall the nucleus once again okay then i will go on to the um, next slide okay so uh, uh, how many nucleus in the preoptic region harija will you answer one okay so what about the supraoptic region ratna four how many how many four, four nucleus okay 
uh, Roshini, row number 115. How many are there in the tuberal uh, region? Three, mom. Three, okay, good. Okay. Mrithila, um, how many are there in mam mammillary region? Two. Okay, good. Uh, okay, we'll go on to the next slide. Uh, so we'll de see detail about the preoptic region. You know where it is located? Where it is located? Lamina terminus. Is, yeah, very good. It lies close to the lamina terminus. It has one nucleus that is preoptic nucleus. See, if you see the medial to lateral division, you, uh, you have two zones, medial and lateral zone. The medial zone is again divided into periventricular and intermediate. Okay, now this preoptic nucleus will extend all three zones that is periventricular, intermediate, latent. So it is located in the preoptic region, but it extends throughout the all three zones of the medial to lateral zone. So the main function of the preoptic nucleus is it regulates the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone. Okay. So clear about the function. So it regulates the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone. Okay. So for further details, you will read in physiology. Okay. Okay. So I'll go to the next slide. So next we'll see about the supraoptic region. So you, where it is located, supraoptic region, it is located above the optic chiasma. Okay. So it has four nucleus. I already said it has four nucleus. Now see the picture, all of you. So the first nucleus above the optic chiasma is the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Okay. Then uh, second one above the optic uh, chiasma, above the suprachiasmatic nucleus, you can see the supraoptic nucleus. The next red color nucleus is the anterior nucleus and the yellow color one is the paraventricular nucleus. Okay. Now see the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Okay. So the suprachiasmatic a nucleus the main function is it regulates the circadian rhythm okay so that is the sleep pattern um, sleep and wake up cycle okay then this anterior uh, nucleus it controls and regulates the body temperature so whenever there is need arises it cools the body and whenever it uh, if want to increase the temperature it increases the temperature mainly it cools uh, cooling mechanism it responds to heat okay then if you see the third and fourth, third one is the supraoptic nucleus, fourth one is a paranormal, which is very important because it is connected to posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. There is neurohypophysis through a tract called hypothalamohypophysial tract. Okay. So the supraoptic nucleus, it secretes the antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. Okay, this paraventricular nucleus uh, releases the oxytocin hormone. So, you know, the, this antidiuretic hormone mainly it regulates the uh, water uh, uh, absorption and thing. And oxytocin mainly helps in the uh, function of the contraction of the uterus and the uh, alveoli of the mammary gland. Okay, so I think now you are clear about the supraoptic region nucleus and its function any doubt in this because uh, the functional part uh, you will read detailly in physiology here just i will give a uh, hint because anatomy if you know this much if you write this much that is enough okay so shall i continue yes, yes ma'am ma okay mm. Okay, now see the coronal section of the brain. Actually, hypothalamus is a single structure or it's a, uh, um, by, uh, actually, there's only one hypothalamus or two hypothalamus in brain. Two. Who will answer? Yeah, it is two. Actually, you can see in coronal section, you can see the hypothalamus on either side. And see the nucleus surrounding. This is the third ventricle. Now you can see the nucleus surrounding. So just to show it is a bi uh, uh, um, uh, Actually, two structure. There is two hypothalamus. I have shown this picture. Okay. Okay. Now uh, come to the next third region. What is the name of the third region? It is tuberal region. So it consists of three nucleus. Okay. 
Additionally, you have one more nucleus also that is pre-mammillary nucleus that I have not mentioned there. Okay. So now if you see the uh, first nucleus just above the infundibular stalk, this is called arcuate nucleus or it is also otherwise called infundibular nucleus. The shape is arcuate in shape. That's why it is called arcuate nucleus. The next nucleus will be ventromedial nucleus and the next one will be the dorsomedial nucleus. And uh, just uh, anterior to the mammillary body, you can see the pre-mammillary nucleus. So all these nucleus are present in the median zone. But one more nucleus also present in the tubular region. So that is present in the lateral zone. So the lateral zone has a small lateral tubular nucleus. So this uh, picture is showing only the nucleus in the medial zone. Okay, the lateral zone will be a little deeper. Okay, so the lateral zone has one nucleus in the tubular region that is the lateral tubular nucleus. Okay, so clear about the nucleus in the tubular region. Any doubt in this? Shall I continue? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Uh, Karthik, uh, you have asked all these nucleuses are gray matter. Yeah, definitely it is all the nucleuses are gray matter only. Okay, no doubt in that. Okay, now see the function. So what is the first nucleus here? Arcuate shaped nucleus. It is called infundibular or arcuate nucleus. So the main function here, it acts as a hormone releasing factor. Okay, it controls the release of hormones in adenohypophysis. So uh, not only it uh, releases uh, releasing hormone, it also releases uh, inhibiting hormones also. Okay, so the next one will be, what is this black color one? Anybody is having, uh, will you answer what is the black color one? Ventromedial. Ventromedial. Okay, so ventromedial nucleus, uh, the main function of the ventromedial nucleus is, it acts as a satiety center okay it suppresses the hunger if there is any damage to that what happened so they will overeat and they will become obese so uh, the, there is one syndrome related to that this is called frolic syndrome that i will explain in uh, applied anatomy okay so the next third one will be the dorsomedial nucleus it mainly it controls the behavior of individual and its um, emotion so this behavior, uh, that is savage behavior, it controls the savage behavior. That means irresponsible, some violent behavior it controls. Okay. So that is the main function of the nucleus in the tuberal region. Okay. So any doubt in that? Shall I continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That pre-mammillary and lateral tuberal, lateral tuberal nucleus, which is present in the lateral zone, also connected to the arcuate nucleus. Pre-mammillary nucleus is connected to mammillary nucleus. So the mammillary nucleus, uh, I will explain in the next two. Okay. So next we will see about the mammillary region. So mammillary region, I already said two nucleus that is seen in the medial zone. Okay. So the name of the two nucleus is mammillary nucleus. The other one is a posterior nucleus. Okay. So which is seen in the medial zone. The lateral zone has tubero-mammillary nucleus. Okay, so the main function of the tubromammillary nucleus, it will be active in the wakeful state. Okay, then if you see the function of the mammillary nucleus, it is a relay station between limbic system and thalamus. So it also forms a part of the pappus circuit that is long term mammary, mammary process because already limbic system is taken for you. I think uh, um, you will be familiar with this. Okay. Then if you see the function of the posterior nucleus, it controls the cardiovascular function and it is also sensitive to heat loss and it rises temperature by vasoconstriction. So it mainly controls the sympathetic system. That is the main function of the posterior nucleus. Okay. So the anterior uh, part of the hypothalamus is regulating the parasympathetic nervous system. The posterior part of the hypothalamus is regulating the sympathetic nervous system okay so i think now you are uh, clear with the functions of the nucleus any doubt in that shall i continue shall i continue okay good uh, 
okay we'll next we'll go on to the see the picture of the nucleus in the lateral zone so actually the lateral zone has preoptic nucleus supraoptic nucleus tuberal nucleus that is lateral tuberal nucleus and on larger nucleus there is lateral nucleus and tuberomamular nucleus so this lateral nucleus i didn't mention in the any other part because it is particularly confined to the lateral zone so the main function of the lateral nucleus is it initiate eating and increase food intake that is it acts as a hunger center okay it also acts as a thirsty center also okay so um, this is the main function of the lateral nucleus so the ventromedial nucleus is a satiety center so dorsomedial nucleus is a controlling the behavior of emotions that is savage behavior and the lateral nucleus mainly helps uh, acts as a hunger center and thirst thirsty center okay now go see the nucleus all other nuclei will be in the medial zone so except uh, the nucleus whatever you have seen in the previous picture all other nuclei will be in the medial zone okay so this is the picture this is for understanding okay so next we'll go on to the um uh, connections of the hypothalamus so the connections you will have both afferent and efferent connections so afferent connections it will receive from retina through suprachiasmatic nucleus okay it it receives afferents from cortex also and it receives afferents from pharynx stria terminalis it also receives afferents from thalamus subthalamus okay and tegmentum of the midbrain okay so this all the afferent fibers reciprocally they will give efferent fibers also so it is very easy to read the connections of the hypothalamus okay now we'll see little bit detailly so uh, you can i think you are familiar with this picture and this is the para hippocampus gyrus you can see the hippocampus and this is the pharynx okay and in this pharynx is connected to the septal area and also to the mammillary body okay so this pharynx mainly connects the hippocampus to the mammillary body okay so it is also you know the mammillary body has the mammillary nucleus so so the afferent connection is coming through this okay then next will be the stria terminalis so the stria terminalis will be connecting the amygdaloid body to the preoptic and anterior hypothalamic nucleus okay you can see the anterior portion of hypothalamus so now the stria terminalis connects the amygdaloid complex to the anterior part of hypothalamic nucleus okay and mammillary pedungle okay this is a actually one picture is enough for drawing the connection and i think this picture will be easy for you otherwise at the end i'll post one more picture so that will be very easy for you okay so this is the mammillary pedungle actually this mammillary pedungle they carry uh, the uh, fibers from ventral and dorsal tegmental nuclei of midbrain and even it carries fibers from autonomic uh, centers in the spinal cord also and uh, even from the reticular formation also okay so this will be related into the mammillary nucleus okay so it mainly carry visceral impulses to the hypothalamus okay so next will be the medial forebrain actually um, so most of the afferent fibers um, that is this other uh, uh, than uh, um, from limbic system from olfactory area all this passes through the bundles so one is mammillary pedungle other one will be the medial forebrain bundle the next one will be the dorsal longitudinal fasciculus actually in this picture i think they everything they have removed they have shown only the nucleus and the connection you can see this is the stria terminalis and here is the pharynx this is the septal region so a little bit complicated i got from a neuroanatomy book okay and uh, because i didn't get any other better picture for this medial forebrain bundle and uh, dorsal longitudinal fasciculus okay so this is the amygdala and here is the medulla section so this is the midbrain okay in between you have the pons so the midbrain uh, you can see um, uh, mammillo tegmental tract is arising from the uh, tegmental part of the midbrain and here you can see the limbic midbrain also okay 
so now this medial forebrain bundle this is the medial forebrain bundle so you can see it connects the septal region to the hypothalamic nucleus so it mainly connects autonomic and limbic structures of forebrain to hypothalamus okay and uh, this uh, dorsal longitudinal fasciculus of uh, has it arises from periaqueductal gray matter of midbrain here and it, it spreads to the caudal and dorsal region of the hypothalamus okay so uh, this how this uh, afferents are um, going so this i am just telling detaily but uh, uh, you can read simply no need to this is for your understanding i am telling okay i'll go to the next so i think now you are uh, uh, clear with the afferents any doubt in this shall i continue with the afferent swati yes ma'am okay uh, we'll go on to the efferent connection so i said it's reciprocally connected okay so the efferent connections are um, the fibers uh, descending fibers arising from the hypothalamic nucleus that is called descending hypothalamic tract then another three important uh, efferent connections are mammillothalamic tract mammillotegmental tract and hypothalamo hypophyseal tract okay so this uh, this i'll show in the next picture okay so this mammillothalamic tract it from mammillary nucleus it goes to the anterior nucleus of thalamus from there it goes to the gyrus cingulate okay so this constitutes the mammillothalamic tract then next will be the um, uh, actually mam mammillary pedangle that is mammillotegmental tract okay so this uh, through dorsal and ventral tegmental nuclei the afferent connections are uh, um, coming and again it uh, uh, through same bundle efferents are going okay and you can see the new uh, pituitary gland here okay so uh, this tract is the hypothalamo hypophyseal tract and even it is also through infundibular tubero infundibular tract it is connected to the anterior lobe of the this is the posterior lobe is connected to the hypothalamus through hypothalamo hypophyseal tract anterior lobe is connected to the hypothalamus through tubero infundibular tract so other than this there are efferents also going to the subthalamic nucleus and uh, um, afferents also received from nucleus of salivary that's why you have satiatory center hunger center everything is seen in the hypothalamus okay i think now you are clear with the efferent pathways so these are the main efferent pathways shown in the sagittal section so this is the hypothalamo hypophyseal tract so this is the mammillothalamic tract connected to the thalamus mammillotegmental tract here and this is the descending fibers to brain stem and the spinal cord okay now we'll see detailly about the hypothalamo hypophyseal tract okay uh you know already this about the supraoptic nucleus and paraventricular nucleus okay yamini row number 149 will you answer for this supraoptic nucleus secretes what hormone or releases what hormone you can ask okay uh, yamini is not there okay others have answered okay it is anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin what about the paraventricular nucleus what about the paraventricular nucleus varsha oxytocin yeah oxytocin okay good okay now see the picture so this uh, actually this uh, paraventricular nucleus uh, this uh, releases this um, Uh, this neurotransmitters it passes through a tract that is called paraventricular tract then it is joining with the supraoptic tract also okay both forms the hypothalamo hypophyseal tract it is also otherwise called supraoptico hypophyseal tract okay so this will be relayed in the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland okay you know the functions actually it has an antidiuretic effect antidiuretic hormone Okay, increase absorption of water in the distal conduct tubule and collecting tubule of kidney. So oxytocin function, you know. So this is one of the important connections of the hypothalamus to the pituitary. 
So hypothalamus make an important connection with the pituitary gland to the posterior lobe through hypothalamo hypophyseal tract. That is mainly two nucleus: supraortic nucleus and paraventricular nucleus. Okay. Now next will be the hypothalamo hypophyseal portal system. Okay. Now see this picture. You know this is the uh, area for the tubular region. Okay. Now the nucleus present here is the arcuate nucleus. So now the um, actually the axons of cells in the arcuate nucleus they end in the median eminence and the infundibular star. So this will travel through the tuberohypophyseal tract. So which convey the releasing hormone and release inhibiting hormone. Okay. So this um, tuberohypophyseal tract is mainly formed by the superior hypophyseal artery, which is a branch of internal carotid artery, and it forms a anastomosis with the portal hypophyseal portal vein. Okay. So this also makes an anastomosis with the inferior hypophyseal artery. So they form an arterial loop here. Okay. Now the um, actually this hormones which is secreted in the arcuate nucleus and lateral tubular nucleus they will pass through the tuberohypophyseal tract okay and they will be really um, uh, released in the anterior lobe so this you know this releasing hormone they stimulate the production and the release of the acth and fsh lh tsh gh so what is the expansion for ACTH? Varsha, will you answer for this? What is ACTH? Adrenocorticotrophic. Adrenocorticotrophic. Okay, what about what about FSH? Follicle stimulating. Follicle stimulating hormone. Okay. Uh, Sindhu Devi, what is LH? What is LH? Sindhu Devi, will you answer what is LH? Okay. Vinudariga, will you answer for this? What is LH? Lutin lutinizing hormone. Very good. Lutinizing hormone. So what is TSH? Samira, what is TSH? I don't Okay, Sharmila, what is GH? Growth hormone. Okay. So now Renika Devi, what is MSH? What is MSH? Follicle stimulating hormone. MSH. Now I'm asking MSH. See this release inhibiting hormone inhibit the release of MSH. What is MSH? Melatonin stimulating hormone. Uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone. Very good. Okay. This LTH is luteotrophic hormone. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. So we'll uh, continue with this. Any doubt in the connection, different connection? Shall I continue? Yes. Okay. So okay. Next, we'll go on to the. Summary of connections of the hypothesis. This is a simple one. You can easily um, uh, write this. Okay. See, it is um, reciprocally connected with thalamus, cortex, limbic system. Okay. And with visceral centers in brainstem and spinal cord. But uh, only you have efferent connection with pituitary gland and afferent connection with olfactory and visual inputs and even from somatosensory pathways. Okay. Okay. So you know the functions of the hypothalamus because already I have uh, described the functions in the nucleus part. Uh, shall I continue or you want to explain the functions because you can read this part. I think you will not have much doubt in the functions. Okay. Continue. Ma okay. okay. Continue. Okay. I'll go with the applied anatomy. Okay. Now, actually, if there is any lesion in the supraoptic, what is the function of the supraoptic nucleus? What is the function of the ADH? ADH. So, uh, what is the function of the ADH? What increases absorption in the renal tubules. 
very good so that means uh, mainly concern uh, it will maintain the urinary volume okay so what happen if the supraoptic nucleus is damaged polyuria yeah you will get the polyuria so this polyuria. condition is yeah this condition is called diapetus insipidus so how will you differentiate diapetus insipidus from diapetus mellitus uh, in glucose will not be excreted gravity is more in uh, diabetes mellitus less in diabetes insipidus pardon uh, i could not hear uh, you uh the urine analysis shows a higher uh, specific gravity of urine in diabetes mellitus compared to insipidus so uh, other than this the main point i think who answered i don't know uh, glucose will be absent in the urine okay that is the main uh, important diagnostic point of the diabetes insipidus okay so clear okay so uh, next condition is the frolic syndrome it is otherwise called dystrophia adiposa genitalis okay so this is mainly due to lesion of anterior hypothalamus that is ventromedial nucleus so what is the function of the ventromedial nucleus okay it suppress the hunger so what happen if it is uh, not suppressed so there will be increase appetite obesity. and ah uh, yeah obesity and depressed secretion of gonadotropin this results in uh, mal development of the uh, gonads so, so the, it is called sexual infantilism okay they will not attain the puberty and uh, secondary sexual characters will not be seen so it is also associated with the dwarfism okay so this is a uh, this condition is called frolic syndrome okay okay so next will be the narcolepsy have you seen non sigapu manidan movie how many of you have not seen this movie visal movie bulimia is different actually bulimia is different and uh, frolic syndrome is different okay uh, kogila is your uh, okay ma'am okay uh have you seen non sigapu manidan movie pathingla yes ma'am yes okay. ma'am ah uh, so that condition is called narcolepsy okay so abnormal sleep pattern usually sudden attack uh, actually the patient uh, will uh, uh, have uncontrollable desire for sleep and they suddenly they will fall asleep it will even occur in the day time okay so um, actually this is caused mainly due to um, hormone actually in, uh, that is called orexin uh, hormone so that will be present in the neurons of the hypothalamus if there is any uh, reduction in this hormone this will results in narcolepsy make a note on this the name of the hormone is orexin o r e x i n okay if it is reduced this leads on to a condition called narcolepsy okay so clear any doubt in this okay okay so one more question for you and uh, just you find out and tell me okay uh, I, in case of any infectious this is why the first symptom is fever so you know the hypothalamus regulates the body temperature so what happened to the mainly which one anterior uh, nucleus uh, will control this okay so what happened in infectious this is uh, the first symptom is fever so what is the uh, pathology behind this okay so you can just search in the net this is a, a homework for you tomorrow you can send it through whatsapp okay individually or you can put it in the group also so clear okay so this is the conclusion so both hypothalamus and uh, uh, thalamus will have lot of nucleus but uh, it's very hard to remember but not but not impos impossible okay so you have to remember the nuclei of the hypothalamus and even the thalamus thalamus i will take you in the next week because i have already powerpoint 
only little bit i have to read uh, no time to read that okay so any doubt in this anybody is having any doubt in hypothalamus hmm kirtana 67 doubt irka illa ma'am padichakapro doubt vandha kekkala ma'am okay good what about others parshini kanishka harini whoever is attending i think um okay good okay shall i end the class anybody is having any doubt any doubt i'll wait for uh, one more minute <coughs> sorry okay so aarti is asking what about our dissection classes i don't know because uh, after uh, college reopens uh, i think uh, based on your date of exam we will have a rapid dissection schedule okay so neuroanatomy we will finish in one week uh, demonstration and uh, i think after finishing the neuroanatomy we are going to start the head and neck also okay so you will have a rapid uh, revision of the uh, dissection will be there okay don't worry you will see the structures any other doubts aarti because you are the only one uh, i think you are worrying too much about uh, uh, anatomy and other thing so don't worry enjoy your holidays and read okay keep in touch and um, read all the uh, previous portion